In this video, I'm going to be covering section 6-2, the normal distribution. So in the prior sets of videos, we looked at a standard normal distribution. And when you think, when you hear standard normal, you should think a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So um, a non-standard normal distribution is just a normal distribution where the, the mean is not zero and the standard deviation is not one. So for example, you might have something like men's height, right? Let's assume that men's height are normally distributed. So what that means is it has a distribution that has a bell-shaped uh, curve, right? So in the middle, uh, let's say that, let's say we knew that we were given that the mean was 69.5 inches with a standard deviation of 2.4 inches. So we know that in the middle here, that's the mean, right? So the mean uh, is 69.5, so that's the middle value. And let's say that each of these represents like a standard deviation apart, then we would have like, those would be the values on the right, and then the values on the left would just subtract 2.4 to get each of these values. But then moreover, we know that it also extends further, further than what we just see here. The heights extend further there. And the more we go to the left, like the less people there are, less men who have, or less percentages who have that height, um, and w the more we go to the right as well. So the bulk of the people are kind of concentrated in the middle here. All right, so, and then the area under the curve is 100% of, uh, of the men's height, right? So the area of, under the entire curve is 100% of the men's height. All right, and again, it extends, uh, theoretically extends all the way to pos negative infinity and positive infinity to the right. So the curve also extends like that as well, theoretically even though we know it's not possible to have uh, heights that are more than, that, that are extremely high, that that's not possible, right? Uh, so let, let's go ahead and take a look at um, an example. Actually, before we take a look, I just want to remind you guys of the two functions on the TI-84 calculator, TI-83 calculator that we've been using for normal distribution. Uh, it's the same thing, uh, the same thing, uh, the functions that we used in the last section we're going to use in this section. So normal CDF is used to find an area under the curve, a probability, or a percentage of a population, right? And an inverse norm is used to calculate a z-score or an x-value. So again, z-score is if, if we're in the standard normal distribution, X value is if we're in a non-standard normal where the X can stand for like height, weight, IQ scores, um, or whatnot. So let's take a look at this problem. So we have that uh, many airlines have a requirement that a member of the cabin crew must have a height between 62 inches and 73 inches. Given that men have normally distributed heights with a mean of 69.5 inch and a standard deviation of 2.4 inches, find the percentage of men who satisfy that height requirement. So we know it's normally distributed. We know the mean is 69.5 inches with a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. And we're trying to find the percentage of men who satisfy that height requirement, right? Uh, so we're given that it's normally distributed, so we know it has a bell-shaped distribution where the center is the mean, right, 69.5 inches, with a standard deviation of 2.4. And we're trying to find whether um, the percentage of men who satisfy the height between 62 and 73 inches, so somewhere right here, 62 to 73. So we know that the area under the entire curve, the shaded uh, area under the entire curve, that's 100% of men's height, but we're just looking for that section. So prior, <clears throat> before technology, we had to um, convert everything to z-scores, right? We had to convert everything to z-scores, and then we had to use tables. So we had to use a table that like this. Uh, but now, that uh, we have, that we're using the the um, the TI eighty four TI eighty three calculators. Uh, we're we're not going to do that. So we don't 
necessarily need to convert it to z scores but just know that later on we may um, s certain things may make reference to like um, the test st statistic which is a z score or just like a z score and that's why they're doing that because prior um, before technology we had to calculate the z scores and use a table okay so let's go back to the problem at hand So we're looking for the percentage of men who satisfied that height requirement between 62 inches and 73. So essentially from 62 inches to 73, what percentage constitutes uh, that piece that is shaded uh, blue, that bluish color? So, oops, <laughs> advanced a little too fast. Let's go back. So we know we're going to use, because we're looking for a percentage um, or an area under the curve, we know we're going to use inverse norm. So let's go ahead and pull out our calculator. So we know we're going to go to um, second vars to the distribution function, going to go to normal CDF. So the lower is, is the leftmost point, which is 62, and the upper is the rightmost point, which is 73. And the mean is no longer zero. Standard deviation is no longer one, right? This was when it was standard normal. Now we, we have to adjust, so the mean is 69.5, and the standard deviation is 2.4. So we're going to click um, Pace, and we get that. So again, this is the decimal form. This is the decimal form, right? And we know the entire thing area is 1, which is 100%. So we had to change that to a percentage, because it's asking for a percentage. So we're going to multiply by 100 and we get that 92 per 92.67% satisfy that height requirement so 92.67% of men uh, satisfy the height requirement of between being between 62 inches and 73 inches okay let's take a look at a different problem so with this problem, it says, when designing an environment, one common criterion is to use a design that accommodates 95% of the population. What aircraft ceiling height will allow 95% of men to stand without bumping their heads? Assume that heights of men are normally distributed with a mean of 69.5 inches and a standard deviation of 69.5. I'm sorry, a standard deviation of 2.4 inches with a mean of 69.5 inches. Okay, so essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a value that separates the bottom 95%, right? The men's height that separates the bottom 95% so that this height will allow the bottom 95% to, to walk through this uh, aircraft without bumping their heads. Okay, so if you guys recall, anytime we're trying to find a value on the axis, we need to use inverse norm, right? We're going to use inverse norm here. So we're going to go uh, to, we're going to press second vars, inverse norm, and we must put the area to the left. For our calculator here, we have to put the area to the left. So that's going to be 0.95. Please do not put 95. Uh, you may get it wrong if you put 95. Put the decimal form. So 0.95, the mean is, is uh, 69.5. Standard deviation is 2.4. And then we're going to paste, press enter. And the height would be 73 point, so this height would be approximately 73.45 inches. So in other words, we need our ceiling height to be um, this tall or this high so that 95% of the men can walk without bumping their heads. Okay, so for the rest of this video, I'm just going to go through uh, a lot of problems, um, work out a lot of problems in your notes so that you guys get the hang of it. I encourage you to press pause and try to work these problems out yourself just to see, um, you know, see if you got the hang of things and then come back and watch the videos. All right, so for this set of problems, it says uh, round probabilities to four decimal places, round other values to one decimal place if needed. So the, the context of the problem says IQ scores are of adults are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Question A says, uh, 
So we want to calculate the percent of IQ scores less than 85. So we're, we want to calculate the IQ scores, the percent of IQ scores less than 85. So we know that uh, we we know that IQ scores. So these are my x values, which in this case represents IQ scores. Uh, they have a distribution that is bell-shaped. That's what being normal indicates. Uh, the mean is at 100. Standard deviation is at 15. And I want to find the percent of IQ scores less than 85. So in the middle here, we know that's 100. 85 is somewhere over here. And I want to know, I want to find the percent of the IQ scores that's less than 85. So we know that the entire the area entire uh, under the entire curve is 100%, but we want to figure out that section right there that's less than 85. We want to see what that percentage is. So anytime we're looking for a percentage or an, an area under the curve, we're going to use normal CDF. So we're going to go second VARS, normal CDF, and the area, I'm sorry, the lower bound, right? So under the shader region, the leftmost point is the lower bound, and the rightmost point is the upper bound. So the, the rightmost point, we know that's 85. That's going to be our upper. The lower bound, again, it shades. We're assuming that it's shading all the way to uh, the left right here. It extends all the way to infinity, negative infinity. So we're, the number we've been using was negative 999. That works all the time, uh, most of the time, uh, all the time in this class. Uh, I've never ran into a situation where it, it didn't work, the negative 9999. Nine. All right, and then the upper bound is 85. The mean is 100. Standard deviation is 15. So just like that, paste, and we get that. But then we have to change this to a percentage. We know this is the decimal form. We need to multiply by uh, 100 to get the decimal answer. So that is approximately 15.9%. All right, we're rounding to one decimal place. So for this problem, <clears throat> we have the same situation. These are IQ scores, and but now we're we're calculating, uh, we're trying to find the percent of IQ scores above 122. So we know in the middle here that's 100. 122 is to the right, and we're trying to calculate that percentage right above above 122. So we know because we're looking for an area under the curve, uh, we're going to use normal CDF. So I'll let you guys work that one yourself. I'll, I'll come back and show you guys the answer in a bit. For question C, it says find the probability of selecting a person. Uh, so randomly selecting a person with an IQ score between 70 and 119. So we're looking for a probability in this problem. So we know that IQ scores are normally distributed. So we know IQ scores are has a normal distribution where the mean is 100, standard deviation is 15. And we're trying to find, well, what's the probability that we randomly select a person and their IQ is between 70 and 119? So 70 is somewhere over here. 119 is somewhere right here. So we're trying to figure out that percentage, right? That percentage would tell us the pr probability or that that area under the curve would find would tell us the probability. So anytime we're trying to find a, an area or probability or percentage of a of a population for a normal distribution, we're going to use normal CDF. So here we're going to use normal CDF. So the lower bound is 70. It's the leftmost point. The upper bound is 119. Uh, the mean is, is 100. Standard deviation is 15. So again, input that. I'll come back and show you guys the answer to that question in a bit. Uh, let's look at question D. It says, find the probability of selecting a person with an IQ score greater than 120. So we're looking at the probability. Oops. We're looking at the probability of selecting a person with an IQ score of greater than 120. <clears throat> so very similarly, uh, we're going to draw the picture, and then we're just going to mark it at 120 and shade to the right. And I'll, sh I'll just tell you that the function is normal CDF and I'll show you guys the answer in a bit but let's look at E so E we have find the IQ score that separates 
the bottom 65%. So take note how this answer, this question is different. So for this question, we're not looking for a probability or a percent of an IQ score. We're looking for an IQ score. So in other words, we're looking for a value on the axis here. We're looking for a value that's on the axis. And the value that we're looking for is, we're looking for the IQ score that separates the bottom 65. So here's 50%, so 60, bottom 65% is somewhere over here. So we're looking for that value. And we know that this shaded region has an area of 65%. All right, so for a problem like this, it should tell us that we're going to use inverse norm. All right, anytime we're looking for a value on the axis, uh, we're going to use inverse norm. So the area to the left is 0.65. The mean is 100, standard deviation is 15. All right, so we're gonna go second vars, inverse norm. So the area is 0.65. This is 100, this is 15. Oops, 